It's been a year since I failed my very first practical driving exam here in Germany and I wanted to share with you why I failed in the first place so you guys wouldn't have to repeat the same um, mistake that I made. So if you are interested, then keep on watching. Hello beautiful people, I hope you're all doing great. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by here and please do go ahead by clicking on the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you can get notified as to when I upload new videos. And to all my returning subscribers, thank you all so much for your continued support. I appreciate each and every one of you. You guys are the realest OGs. Thank you so much for um, your support. So, um, as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be um, going back about a year ago when I initially took my driving practical exam here in Germany. I did mention in um, one of my videos that I will tell you on how I failed my, my very first um, practical exam but for some reason I never got to it and since as it's almost a year since I did the um, exam and failed it. I just wanted to like share with you why and how I failed this exam in the first place. So it's basically going to be um, a story time, should I say. I should have come at you guys ages ago, but for some reason, time wouldn't um, permit me. So um, yeah, I've got two other like videos on um, driving here in Germany. These videos are two part series to um, driving here in Germany. So the very first one is the um, theoretical aspects of driving here in Germany. And the second one is the practical um, aspect of driving here in Germany. So if you want to um, pass your um, exams, both of these exams in one go, I would suggest that you go check those videos out. I will leave both links of the videos in the description box down below as well as putting it up somewhere on the screen as well so you guys can click on it if you want to go check it out. Without further ado, let's get to um, why I failed my um, driving practical exam in the first instance so you wouldn't have to repeat the same mistakes I made. Like learning how to drive in Germany is a nightmare. There's so many rules, so many regulations and it feels so good when you finally like gone through all those steps but when you've got to do the exam and for some reason you failed it then it's not so nice because of course you're spending so much money and it's frustrating but anyway um, on the fateful day sometime this time around last year if that makes sense um, my instructor had told me a week before that okay before you go on to the practical exam with the examiner I would like to spend another 45 minutes with you driving so I can give you tr tips and tricks just brush up on some of your skills and just remind you of the things that you need to do things you shouldn't do and stuff like that and I was like yeah sure no worries I mean what is another 45 minutes and maybe another 45 euros going to do if not make me pass my exam eventually because of course the exam costs around about 220 50 euros 250 euros give or take roughly depending on what um district or what city you're living in it just varies this time last year <laughs> i sort of like woke up really worried i wasn't too sure what to expect but i just tried not to think too much about it because everyone going through an exam period usually feels some type of stress at a particular point in time and I guess that was what I was experiencing but I didn't think it was a bad kind of stress I think it was just me anxiously waiting for this phase to be over but um, as the, time, as the day went on my instructor came to pick me up from home we drove for 45 minutes, he told me that I drove well, 
I should just remember to do certain things and whatnot, just like the basic kind of things that a learner should sort of like know and understand when they're taking the um, exam. He seemed pretty confident that I would actually pass the exam. Um, I mean, my instructor, if he seemed really confident. And from there on, I think my confidence sort of like started increasing and I felt good about the day and I thought, okay, in the next one hour, I should go back home with my, um, with my certificate saying that I passed. But it wasn't the case. <laughs> we drove around and we went to the car park where we were meant to pick up the um, examiner. We actually waited quite a while because he was, he, he, he took another exam with someone else and we had to wait for him to arrive and do whatever it was. He um, came to our car, sat at the back, just right behind my instructor. He requested for my um, ID and certain documents relating to me passing my theoretical exam and just like general IDs to identify that I am who I say I am kind of thing. And it was like, giving me certain instructions saying that you know what yeah when we start driving and if i don't tell you to turn left or right just keep going straight ahead and that if i do have any questions i should sort of like ask him and i shouldn't get worried and i can have a conversation with him truly whilst i'm driving during the exam rather than it being stiff kind of thing but before all that happened before anything came out of his mouth i was okay but as soon as he started talking that's when i lost it as in i didn't lose it like completely but i was like oh my god i can't understand him and that was one of the things that sort of like made my anxiety increase again because his accent was just totally totally different from every other accent I had heard and I could barely understand him and my mistake was not telling him to slow down because I was thinking in my head okay Tiwa you're panicking already you've got to calm down and in that phase of me trying to calm down I forgot to tell him or to ask him continuously feel like um, learn some expression kind of thing I forgot to tell him to speak um, slowly and that was where it's like it all started off wrong. I mentioned that he asked for certain documents. I gave them to him. He input some of the information on, on his computer. And just before we started off, like five minutes before we started off, he, he went, all right, then with his weird German accent, show me where the lights are or the headlights, the um, hazard lights, the um, indicator lights, just, general basic questions of what you should know in your car and because i could barely understand him i did show him some of the things that he requested me to show him but i did it in an in orderly manner because i was panicking all right and the one thing you shouldn't do during this exam is panic he told me to drive out of the car park of which I did then he told me to um, turn to the right of which I did of course at the um, normal speed limit on that road and um, it got to a point that we were about entering a street of which he requested me to and on the street was um, 30 kilometers per hour on that street and there were two cars on both sides of the road. I will draw um, what I'm talking about as I'm explaining this. So there were two cars on both sides of the road at different um, sections of the road. And there was a car right ahead of me driving, which was still further away. So this is me thinking the car coming towards me is still further away. So I've got enough time to drive or maneuver myself or maneuver my car between these cars that are on the road. So I did that and as soon as I was getting out of um, the, the, the lane I was at, 
to get back on my lane because of the oncoming vehicle um the instructor was like no 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 that's not acceptable you shouldn't have done that you should have been patient but i was thinking well this car was further away from me like really far away from me waiting did not make sense for me at that moment in time but for some reason he complained about it that i should have been patient enough and i should have waited for the car to come through before i took my turn but anyway he mentioned that then i continued driving and we got to a road where we're meant to do like 50 kilometers per hour it was fine then we got to a road that we were meant to do um, 100 kilometers per hour and because I was still panicking from the mistake that he told me that I had made and from the way he was speaking to me I was just like really really scared and I wasn't confident basically behind the wheel and whilst I was driving on that 100 kilometer um, per hour road he complained about it, saying I was too slow. Meanwhile, I was doing 97 kilometers per hour. So I couldn't understand how I was doing 97 kilometers per hour on a 100 kilometer per hour road and he's complaining that I'm too slow. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, a driver has got to be like cautious and you've got to save gas as well. So, <laughs> If there are no cars behind you, you're not obstructing traffic. I mean, I'm doing 97 kilometers per hour and you're telling me I'm too slow on a 100 kilometer per hour road. I'm just three kilometers, like it's, it's just three kilometers difference, give or take. So you shouldn't really complain about that. But anyway, it got to a point where I was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. You're lacking confidence. You're not driving safe. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. And I thought to myself, what the hell? The lesson's not even lasted like 20 minutes and you're already telling me that you're so uncomfortable with me driving. But then again though, I totally understand where he came from. At the end of the day, you want a driver who is confident enough to take control of the car and be confident enough to know that okay this is what i'm doing this it's right but then again i couldn't understand why he would fail me on the basis of saying i was too slow on a 100 kilometer per hour road when i was just doing 97 97 shouldn't be a problem right no matter visor when you're on a 50 km per hour road you're allowed to do 52 53 at the most and you're allowed to do less than like plus two minus two kind of thing when it comes to measuring how fast or slow you should be on a particular road that was how i failed my very first um, practical exam and it basically boils down to the fact that i was lacking confidence i was scared and the fact that I could barely understand the examiner's accent so, and I lacked the confidence that I guess the examiner was looking for which is what most examiners are looking for you've got to have that confidence you've got to carry yourself in such a way that yes I have done what I have done I know that I'm right rather than I did that I'm not sure if I am wrong or right you've got to be certain you've got you've got to carry yourself in such a way that the examiner knows that you know what you're doing which is what I lacked during the very first time I did my um, practical exam if I were to give you more tips on passing your practical exam in addition to the previous video that I did on um, tips passing your practical exam in the first place then I would say you should try as much as possible to eliminate any kind of fear that is wanting to burn you down. All right, just remain relaxed and who's that confidence that these examiners are looking for? Because if you haven't got that confidence, I think that is the key thing that they're looking for, confidence. You've got to have that confidence. And if you don't have it, then you're more likely to fail the exam and you shouldn't show the examiner that you're scared which is what I did I usually wear my emotions on my sleeves so 
you don't want to do that on that day. But anyway, thank you all so much for um, watching this video. If you do have any questions, comments, opinions, suggestions, please leave them in the comments box um, down below. And I will leave um, both links of both videos, the theoretical aspects of driving in Germany as well as the practical aspects of driving here in Germany in the description box down below as well as with the thumbnails here on my shoulders so you guys can go check those videos out. They're super informative and if you do have any questions like I mentioned before please just let me know and I will be happy to um, get back to you all and if you're yet to subscribe please do so already as well as clicking the notification bell so you can get notified as to when I upload new videos and until my next video I'm wishing you all a wonderful day bye mm -hmm.